So that was yesterday and uh, it felt so good to do something different outside. As you uh, probably saw in the previous video I said that it's quite busy here these days and um, I noticed that I was thinking in time so I was planning my paintings for a week and then um, you get a, an easy routine you just finish your painting, you bring it to the framer and then you deliver it to the client and you start the next one. And that sounds really comfortable but it makes you lazy too. And uh, I don't want to think in time, you know, I just want to make paintings. So to forget time, I immediately started working slower and that was a good decision. Um, and well, yesterday I went to Amsterdam. Actually, this is near Amsterdam. It's unbelievable. I was asked to make a small watercolor painting from this house. And I stood here in the meadow with my camera. There was no wind and the atmosphere was so good. So I immediately decided to try a watercolor sketch. And from that moment, it was still cloudy in the distance, but it was only sun. So maybe I didn't make a sketch, maybe I just made a small watercolor already from this subject. And this is breaking the easy routine too, you know. I'm only painting houses here in the studio. I like to do that, but it's so good when you have painted five or six houses and then you're suddenly standing in the meadow somewhere and trying to do bushes and trees as well. I changed a few things in this watercolor because um, what I'm learning these days is that um, it's so good to keep things as simple as it can be. So for example sometimes I see something round but it's not totally round and I notice that I want to do a research while I am painting what I'm really looking at but you can't get there you know when you're painting something which is too complex to do in a painting in one day and you still try it you get a strange result so in my opinion when something is round just paint a circle when something looks like a triangle but it's not a, a good triangle then just paint a triangle you know what I mean um, just make it simple because then your painting is easy to look at and then your eye will go to the most interesting parts, the most interesting focus point of the painting and um, strange details are only disturbing. I found one here and I found one there so I just washed it away this morning and I uh, looked if it needed more definition and actually it didn't. That was surprising me. Well, before I move on with this video, uh, I want to do something that I'm promising for weeks now. Uh, lots of you are asking me what kind of paper I'm using, what kind of palette I'm using, and I'll always answer that I will do a little tour here in the studio to show my gear. Uh, I think I should do this now for a few minutes. Um, let's start with the paper. Uh, before I show my paper, I really want to say that you should just use your paper when it's it feels okay for you because these are just personal things, you know. The paper I'm using now for a long time is the thickest paper I've, I can find from Arsh. Um, the thinner ones are uh, the same quality, no doubt. But the thicker one doesn't need to be 
uh, wet and stretched before I start so I just can put it on a board and start painting and that saves time so that's the only reason why I choose the thicker one um, and uh, I have two reasons for choosing Arsh um, the first reason is that the structure of this paper is not everywhere the same you know it looks really naturally and the second reason is that um, when I'm painting a shape with with water or watercolor on this kind of paper it it stays flat like a like a flat film of, of watercolor on the paper and I tried other uh, paper and there I saw still my brushes the moving brushes in this shape and that was too disturbing for me so that's personal so that's why I really love this arch paper um, the palette I bought this one I think one year ago when I started working outside again and I choose this one because it has a it has a lid you can close it so when you're working outside and the watercolor is still wet it's no problem you just close it and you put it in your bag this is very good it's a John Pike palette made in the USA I just bought it here in the shop uh, and I saw you can find it online too uh, and then the brushes uh, this brush took a lot of attention in a few videos it's a shame there is no name on the brush only a brand this is from the Casa Neo series from Da Vinci almost all the brushes I'm using are from Casa Neo for me it's it's one of the best I can find now uh, in this synthetic uh, line and this one has a strong thin point here in the middle and the other hair is a bit softer and when you're using this one you lose control because it feels like you are handling two brushes in one and that's something I really love when I'm painting branches or bushes or leaves for example uh, another one without an English name um, and I'm sorry for that is this slaper here in Holland we call it a slaper and a slaper is a brush which is just a, a round small pointed brush but the, the hair is longer so it can absorb more water and it works very well this is another one a very thin one also from Da Vinci from the Nova Synthetics um, Casaneo series um, I use the flat ones, I use the round ones. It even has a series uh, without a name. Yeah, I just find Casaneo on the brush, I'm sorry. Because this is a good one, this is actually a copy of the squirrel hair, I think. And um, the brand of watercolor paint I'm using is um, most of the, the the pigments I use are from Daniel Smith um, and maybe not well known in the States is this brand Cor. I use these brands because that the pigments are strong and bright and Daniel Smith has strange mixes too with glitter in it for example and it sounds like you are uh, painting with makeup but in cityscapes sometimes it's really useful to try it for um, roofs with a certain hard reflection on it
This morning I took my bicycle to uh, go to the station. It takes me one hour. Uh, so I had uh, the time to put a few things in my head in the right place. And um, I always like to visualize uh, things that are going on. And um, suddenly I got a visualization of what's going on when you are totally focused on what you're doing and you feel quite disturbed by this process. Actually that's going on a few weeks now uh, here. Um, and I would like to share this visualization with you without wanting to be your new age art teacher. Um, maybe it's, it's a bit like that for you, but I think it's really useful to share in, uh, um, it's the best way to explain how you can stay focused and um, relaxed and uh, continue what you're doing. So this is what I mean. Um, when someone is at his or her best, when you are able to make your best painting, create your best sculpture, write your best song, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, but then um, you need all your qualities and all your qualities are like this. This was my visualization this morning. They are all in one line. So um, let's call it, uh, for, it starts with a fascination, uh, you need passion, uh, your willpower, uh, focus, attention, well you can fill in, fill in it yourself. When this is all in one line then actually you you see it as, as the story of the chakra system. It's a very old story of course and um, maybe it's a quite new age story for you but I think this story is not for no one. I think everyone is able to feel this. When you feel very strong and you, you are able to do the best things, this is what you feel. Everything is in one line and everything helps helps each other and it makes you strong. But when you are working together or when you are working for clients, for example, there can happen this. Um, well, this is the client or customer and he or she has another wish. So he or she tells me that they don't want me to paint their house from the corner that I choose, but they want me to do it just in front of the building. Or they say, no, we don't prefer a watercolor. That's what you want, but we, we definitely want you to make a, an oil painting, for example. And then there will happen something like this. So this is the line, it breaks already here. And then the line is broken, it goes like this. This is exactly what I felt now these weeks and for me it's not a big problem I mean I work a bit harder and I try to think from their imagination and I try to make something they like with my own qualities but after a few weeks this is making you tired this is making you very tired and I think then you have three possibilities um, the first possibility could be that you tell this client well please uh, you can trust me. I'm painting for years now. I know what I'm talking about. So please let me make what I can make and you will see this is the best painting you will you, you can have. Or you can tell yourself, uh, well, let's let's try and, and take this opportunity to learn something new, to learn something different. Uh, or you can refuse it. You can say, no, then I'm sorry, we are not going to do this. I'm not able to make it like that. I think all these three possibilities are good, but you need this conversation. It's so important because working like this is possible, but I think everyone gets a bit tired after a few commissioned works. This is so important that everything is in one line and everything helps each other to feel that you can do it. 
So this is not mine. This is, this came not totally of my mind of my mind this morning on my bicycle. This is this is a universal thing. You read it in many books uh, as well. It's it's this is very old. But when you see it, it's so clear, and um, you know what you do. I feel free since I know how the, the importance of this line that needs to be a whole straight line. So, in other words, I think I'm only trying to visualize uh, the perfect state of mind to work at your best. So it's not a, it's not something that that you that you say to yourself that you must work like this. It's nothing else than a pursuit. It's it's an ideal, and um, well, it's something that you can find more often when you know how it works. Um, but it remains an ideal because you all, when when something is your job, you always need to find a balance between the best way of working and in a collaboration um, with all the possibilities that you find. Well, the large watercolor for the for the office here in the Hague. I'm not happy with it. Um, a few weeks ago I made a large watercolor for a client in Deventer, the river with the tower, maybe you saw it. I had to make it again, I made two watercolors. Last week I saw the first watercolor and I saw the same as I'm seeing now in the watercolor of this white building, that I only painted a subject, everything is in it, but uh, I need to make another one. Um, it falls apart. It's only summing up things that I want to paint in this composition. And um, I think when I paint it again, uh, it's a different experience. So I want to destroy it. <laughs> Sometimes then it opens a new possibility. It brings a new possibility to, to, to do something. Uh, that, that's triggering me and uh, to put put life in it and um, if it doesn't work then it's it's destroyed and then I can make another one because uh, I never want to deliver a painting um, without a feeling that um, I know this is the best painting I could make and I don't feel that now. I think I can make a better painting of this building, but I had, have to do it again because it's it's a subject that I like, but it's also a strange subject because it's white. It's a white building, and it's um, it's large. It's a large square with windows, and these windows are squares as well. Um, so now I know where I have to look at. Um, not at windows. Painting windows is boring. So seeing windows in a painting is boring too. So I know what I have to do and I'm really looking forward to make another one or uh, change the watercolor that I made uh, last week.
Well, I think the watercolor can remain more a whole now in this composition and uh, with using less color and less contrast as well and I think I prefer that. Now I can make, I can create more depth with the fence in the foreground and the walking people. Um, but first I will work out the details, the window frames and so on. Yeah, it uh, went quite fast this one, this afternoon, but um, I made this small sketch on location before I begin, but that was really easy, but uh, this subject in a larger size is harder than I thought. It's not always harder to do a subject larger, sometimes it's easier than a small one, but this one is quite hard, I think because it's a wide building and it's flat. Well, thank you for watching and uh, have a nice weekend and see you next week.